Okay, so today is probably the only day that in earth science we're going to talk about astrology. So there's a difference between astrology and astronomy. Does anybody know the difference between those two studies? Astrology here, let me type, let me kind of, I'll type it out real quick. So we're talking about astrology versus astronomy. What? Close, what are we gonna say? Yeah, so what, which one would be the zodiac signs? Uh, yeah, the logi, astrology. It wasn't always that way. So astrology is the study of people's fortunes according to what the stars are showing in the sky. Astronomy is the scientific study of all things that are in space. But like I said, it wasn't always that way. Uh, back uh, thousands of years ago, zodiac signs were used for keeping time. They were used to tell us what time of the year it was. Um, and then the mysticism and fortune got incorporated into that. And for a long time, when people said astrology, they meant the science of studying things in space, but also the study of uh, telling people's fortunes. It wasn't until, the, you know, uh, around 500 years ago or so that the word astronomy was invented to separate the science from the mysticism. Um, and so nowadays we know astronomy is the science, astrology is more the fortune telling. Um, So let's talk about exactly what zodiac signs are and how they work. Um, I'm gonna, and to show you this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be showing you the simulations on today's agenda. So the first one, there's zodiac constellation and there's stellarium. I'm gonna show you stellarium first. Uh, if you ever take my astronomy class, you're gonna be using this website a lot. Let me turn off this light. This is a virtual planetarium. If you go to a planetarium, they'll probably have a projector above you or maybe in front of you showing you the different stars in the sky or maybe planets and what time of the day you can see them. So this is an online uh, planetarium. Uh, so this, this, this is actually set to St. Louis, but this is set to nighttime. I'm going to shift to daytime. So more, this is more or less what the sky looks like right now. This doesn't account for weather or the buildings or anything like that, but this is where the sun is at the sky. Um, one cool thing that this lets me do is this lets me take away the sky. In other words, I could just turn off the sky. If there was no atmosphere, this is what the sky would look like. We would see the sun, but we'd also see a bunch of other stars. Uh, I'm also gonna turn on the constellations. So now I can see the different constellations that are in the sky. So right now, if we had no sky, we would be able to see this constellations. Right now the sun is, uh, kind of between Leo and Virgo. Um, and so, as, so this, um, because the earth goes around the sun, the, the sun is, is always going to be in front of uh, one of 13 major constellations. We call, the, we call those the zodiac constellations. And we call the path that the sun follows is called the ecliptic. So there's a lot more than just 13 constellations, but the sun only passes in front of 13 of them. Those are called the ecliptic or the zodiac constellations. So let me show you another simulation. So this one lets me drag the Earth around its orbit, but it also shows me where the sun is from the uh, what what constellation the sun would be in front of. So right now, that's approximately where the sun is, or as part of that's, this is approximately where the Earth is. Excuse me which puts the sun in between those two constellations. So right now, if you're at nighttime, or right about midnight, the Aquarius would be right overhead. Now, we can't see the constellations Leo and Virgo because the sun's in the way. But six months later, we'd be able to see them as very clearly. So that's why we have summer constellations and winter constellations. And you might even hear people say spring and autumn constellations. But really, that's just because because the Earth is going around the sun. 
During the daytime, we can't see those stars because we have this big atmosphere, this big blue sky that blocks us from, from seeing those stars. But when, if you really study the stars, you'll know where, what stars would be behind the sun, even though you can't see them, because after 12 months of going around the sun, you can record all the stars that should be in the sky. And so around, uh, around 2000 years ago, the Babylonian Empire, uh, they invented lots of shapes for uh, the stars. They're called constellations. And we know them as this, the 12 major zodiac constellations. Um, but again, that was around 2000 years ago. And the thing about the earth is that it doesn't stay and it doesn't stay perfectly straight up and down. You guys remember reading about the tilt of the Earth's axis? It turns out even that tilt doesn't stay perfectly where it is. It kind of wobbles. So after 2,000 years, the Earth axis has wobbled a little bit. And so we've been, the, the astrological signs that we've been using are from 2,000 years ago, which means that the current signs, because the Earth axis has shifted slightly, even, even though, like, for example, let me see. Let me look at my chart here. You guys can look at this chart in a second. So today is September 13th. September 13th. Virgo. Yeah, so according to the old system, this is currently, if you're going to be born on uh, September 13th, you'd be considered a Leo. But if you look at the true, where the sun is actually placed, you would technically be a Virgo. So it's kind of, it's, um, everything is kind of pushed back a month. Um, and there's actually, uh, they, and you guys can see that there's a big gap between Sagittarius and Scorpius here. So to fill in that gap, modern astronomers have added a, another constellation called Ophicius, um, which is so that would make 13 uh, zodiac constellations. Yes, so they, they've, this has been known for a while. People don't really talk about it because, um, like I said, there's a big gap between astrology and astronomy. There's a big gap between people's fortune telling and the science of studying the stars. It wasn't always like that. And I'm sure if that gap didn't exist, then maybe then people wouldn't be using the older signs. So what you guys are gonna do today is you guys, I think a lot of you guys have already done it. You guys are going, uh, I would recommend watching these videos. And then when you do your assignments today, that reading will help you. But there's a CK12 assignment, it's called a Plix assignment. If you guys have trouble with that Plix, let me know. And then you guys, uh, there are these worksheets on along the edges, or you can, this will also be on Google Classroom. Um, so I'll let you get to, I'll let you get to work for that. We only have 15 minutes left. And if you have any questions on how to get started or what to do, let me know.